The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, High Stick NT, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Bean. Bernard Tobin here for Real Agriculture at the Ontario Certified Crop Advisors Conference. Uh, joined by Sean Castile from Purdue University. Hey, sir, thanks for taking the time. Hey, no problem. Enjoyed it being up here. Hey, now you just talked about, I guess, a, taking a little look back at history of soybean right. varieties and looking at you know how things have changed from the 1920s and, and and all the way up to 2010. And I guess when I when I look at your research, a couple of things that yell out, scream out to me, and that is you know the really about nitrogen and how mm -hmm. much more there is in the leaf mm -hmm. and how much more uptake sure yeah with these old lines to new we've been able to go back in time it's kind of like going back to the future right and seeing what's going on and so these old lines have this idea of they've got the bigger leaves and they have bigger leaves that shade out the lower ones and they also just don't have as much nitrogen in those leaves and then we look at the modern lines as we continue to, to go advance go to 1970s 1980s the 2000 2010s they've gotten darker green so more nitrogen is actually what's going on the leaves are actually smaller as well so we go from a leaf this size from the 1920s to a trifillet, so three leaves the size of my hand expanding. So just a vast difference in terms of the leaf shape, which is having this effect on the nitrogen as well. Now, a big job you, for you now, as you pointed out, is most of the you know fertility recommendations on soybeans work done in the late 60s and the 70s. That's right. And uh, we're still we're still working off of that. What you know, what, what, what implications are for that? Sure. Yeah. When you you look at this, you're like okay, those are good. They're they're great until we look at the modern lines in reference to the older lines and so for example when we look at those 1960s lines versus the 2010s we've got the leaf nitrogen uptake is maximizing in R4 and then kind of drops down with our modern or 1960s the modern lines are kind of up are three or so holding and holding, they're retaining those leaves much longer and then dropping down. Well, that has this kind of cascade effect on the pods. And so then when we reach R6, this full seed, uh, the old lines, you know, we accumulate maybe 60% or so of nitrogen in the pods and the seeds, and then they'll gain another 10 to 15% of nitrogen in, in those pods and seeds. The new lines, uh, they're about 40% at R6, uh, have the nitrogen, and then they will go up to 90, 95% by R8, by maturity. So there's a lot more going on later with the nitrogen allocation. Same thing with phosphorus, right? I mean, yep. and, 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 and I guess I wanted to ask you about sulfur too, because sure. a lot of difference. Um, you know, what is, what is all this big activity and we talk about, you know, beans are made in August, there's so sure. much more going on. What is it? What is it? What are the implications for management as we go forward? Yeah, so the idea of understanding that we're doing a lot more, the plant's doing a lot more post R6, really brings this idea of should we be doing anything different in R5, R6? You know, that August month for us in Indiana, the Midwest, as well as up here in Ontario, you know, that can make or break soybeans. Well, that happens to fall in line with R5, R6 growth stages, and so water, temperature, all that plays into it. But now as we've learned about the modern lines, how they're, they're changing with their phosphorus and their nitrogen and their sulfur allocation, that a lot of that's going on at that point. So what should we be doing? That is the question. Uh, should we have higher soil test levels? You know, I can't say yes or no right now, but we need to be looking at that. Should we be looking at any kind of foliar feeding or foliar protection later than we typically have? You know, typically it's R3, R4, and that's about it. Uh, my suggestion today is to at least go out there, observe, take leaf samples, see how things change across the growing season, and don't go fishing after R4. Look, go back out there, R5, R6, they're up to your chest. I know it, but at least see what's going on. You, uh, you did some research on, I guess, you know, asking the question, you know, are, are we fertilizing for 50 bushels or 70 bushels? Right. How, how do you define the big difference there? Well, I think the biggest part of this is to understand where are your soil test levels. You know, that's a great system, soil testing. You know, that's uh, the foundation for fertility management. We, we need to be doing that, obviously. But to understand, are we just kind of giving soybeans the scraps after a corn soybean rotation? Or corn's a great yielder, or like this year, we've got outstanding soybean yield. yield. So are they going to sell corn short now? So to understand that 50 bushel is removing more than 75. That may seem kind of, well, that's a dull moment, but realize that there's a pretty drastic change in the phosphorus and the potassium uptake in that. Yeah, I mean, you talked uh, with the final point uh, with the growers and, and the uh, CCAs today about, you know, uh, the difference between managing corn and soybeans. Sure. I mean, corn's got those big numbers and, you know, you can tweak all those management as aspects and get 10, 15 bushels. But it's a challenge in soybeans. But, but 
that fertility work has to happen to move to the next level. Yeah, it does, right? You know, we have to set the foundation again. So we'll perhaps do some soil test calibration curves again with modern lines. That's one aspect. We need to do that. But let's take the next step. One study I didn't mention today was we're looking at enhancing fertility up front as well as some synergies with foliar protection. And we're seeing some interesting results with these modern lines versus old ones. So I guess that's a teaser for the next time I come up here. Good stuff, sir. Hey, well, thank you for the interview, and we look forward to your uh, to your return. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.